When did you realise that I first had mental health issues? I'd say 15, 16, when you, be, you changed a lot. How so? I think you're becoming angry a lot. Why do you think I was angry? Do you know? Do you know why I was angry? <laughs> Got it? The stigma of mental health is notorious amongst for Asians, but as a culture we're too ashamed to admit to it. The fear of embarrassment, of being considered weak, and the shame it brings to a family. I'm not ashamed to admit to it. I've been to the temples and I've been to the clinics. I remember my first suicide attempt. I've done the drugs and I'm still going through my alcoholism. I'm setting out to break down the stigma of mental health. My name is Manny Barra. I know I'm not the only brown boy blue. My first stop in Derby brought me to author Kalwinder Singh Dinsa, whose memoirs openly talk about life growing up as a Punjabi Sikh and the days that led up to his father's saddening death by suicide. I'm very respectful of my faith and my religion, but I also know certain aspects of our culture are not very beneficial, especially when it comes to our people and the mental health issues that they do have. I think the main one in our community in particular is this um, aspect of pride and uh, especially in, in the case of men, this idea that the men are seen to be the breadwinners, the, the leaders of the household, so everything falls upon their shoulders. They find it so difficult to actually um, communicate with others to express what's going on with them and uh, you know how much difficulty they're in. Some men, for example in my father's case, uh, with the cultural side of it, he, he always liked a good drink like many Punjabi folk did then and still do now. Because sometimes he would get down, he would get uh, you know frustrated and he would have a drink and that's when all the bitterness used to come out of him. It's been almost eight years since I last spent more than one day sober. Now I just celebrate the hours. I just couldn't conform to the social norm of being a headstrong, laddish Punjabi man and the bottle became my best friend. And I remember you saying, I'm scared of you when you drink. I think you were so angry as shit. And then when you drank, you just fueled yourself up into this like twat. And you wouldn't give a shit about anyone. And you thought, yeah, fuck it, I can take it on anybody I want because like, I kind of deserve to do that. You fucking weren't nice. But then I remember when you started saying about your, was it your kidneys? My liver. Your liver, sorry. When um, you started finding more problems than that, that's when I was like, that looks life threatening. I always just thought, oh, it's money. He's he's my big brother. He's big and strong. And then seeing you do it, seeing you going fucking that far, you just never accept it. Can I take you back to the day when, mm -hmm. when my cry for help? Do you remember that day? Cut my face. When you cut your face? Yeah, I remember that. But Tell I was that. suffering in depression myself. And then that's when I had to wake up, call myself. Oh, you need help. But at the same time, I gave you the help and I forgot myself. Mm. Took me to the temple, pray away. What was you expected to get? You to get better, but it didn't work. Nothing worked. Do you think the community, our community, understands? Oh no. You can't speak to anyone, money. It's a family, and we're, we're all proud families. I couldn't speak to no one, no. I've had to deal with it in my way. I remember you turning around and saying to me, I hate you. And you, I remember you turning around. Well, you remember me I don't saying, hate you, I hated what you did. But today I've realised hate's a very strong word. It's I disliked what you did. What was it that I was doing that you didn't like? Everything, everything. It was always like to hurt me, but I didn't understand why you used to hurt me. I just wanted things better, that you guys get on with your life. and But that's what I'm saying, I gave up all my own life, everything of myself, for everyone. But I try, I mean it's hard even today, I try and put myself first and sometimes I can't. I get lost. We took a break from filming, and I decided to dig out some of my old journals. It doesn't 
it's one of them. There it is. The, the 7th of January, 2012. What was some of the stuff that I was looking to do? I want to forget everything. I need to pass my driving. Didn't do that. Get a perfect date. Didn't happen. Stop smoking and drinking. Didn't happen. <laughs> Think positive. Heal this destroyed person. Oh gosh, this is quite scary and it's uh, I'm so sad but I'm so scared. I weigh it out and it never wins. I always try, I'm always wrong, I always fall and never fly. I seek and seek and never find, I give and give and never find. I mean, I'm getting kind of bored of this. I travelled up to Birmingham to meet with a legend in the music business. Apache Indian runs his own academy where young people can openly discuss their mental health issues. For every day that you get up and you do something right, you will get rewarded in all your life. Sorry. I've had my own issues over the years, like I'm sure many people have. Um, but as, a, as again, growing up um, as a young Asian kid in this country, it was hard to speak about them. There was times in my life where I drank too much. There was times in my life I smoked too much. There was times that we just had to go. I'm 50 years old now. I think it took me 50 years to work it all out, kind of thing, because we just don't have that support. But it was never recognised as mental health. It was just problems. We've got these issues, or so maybe cultural, maybe because we're in this country, maybe whatever. Every excuse is thrown at it, as opposed to we have a problem. Let's try to speak about it. You had an arranged marriage. You didn't yeah. know Dad. No, and I didn't know it was all about control. Everybody knows better, they don't. And what everybody expects out to me, that's my life. You didn't realise until 13 years later that you had depression. I had depression. How, how was you not aware of it? Because it's a normal life. It's, I saw that every day and that's my life, it's all control. I, was, I, I, couldn't, I wasn't allowed to think for myself. Fear was put in my head all my life. Fear was the worst thing. And. Can we talk about our sister? Of course she can. What effect did that have on you? A very big effect, because oh. it took me seven years to get pregnant. And when I did get pregnant, I just carried her for 22 weeks and I lost her. And what was the support that you got around that? I got no support from my family because I weren't there for even a funeral or to even pick a coffin. When I used to feel her kicks. But Manny used to kiss my stomach and he was just say, say goodnight from me. I remember that so well. He was the only one that did it because she was meant to come. Her bo she was meant to be born a day before you, the third. Oh, no. And I always remember you guys when you came in the hospital when I, hold, when I had her in my hands. You guys kissed her. And she was only like my palm size in my hands. That hurts today. Oh, don't show. Are you okay, Mum? Do you want to continue or not? Because you don't have to. I can delete all of this right now and That's it can never fine. happen. It's been a month since filming with my mother. I've been speaking with her every day on the phone and she's gone back to counselling. She knew I was nervous about filming with Apache. But on the day, she jumped on the train to come and support me. Glad you came. Oh, you? <laughs> we can have an interview part two, which is good. A different interview. Yeah, exactly. All that sadness in the old oh, interview. Yeah. Don't think of that. Yeah. But I did not you do know? Bless you, thank you so uh, much. No, it's a pleasure of mine, it's a pleasure, thank yeah, you. yeah. You met Father. Right there, there's a recording studio in there. Come in, come in. Welcome. You can sing. See the cameras. Sing really. your songs. Yeah, so we're gonna have a bit of a sing song today. Just thank you. No, no. God that bless. really means a lot. For us to come together, that means a lot to me. God knows why. We're definitely gonna, gonna get her on the mic. Yeah, we're getting the mic there. Before she goes, that's we'll, have a, we'll have a little sing song. We'll have a little sing song. Right here, Aim Academy. We love you. Chuck there. Chuck there.
Well, thank you, Manny. Right. Birmingham was your home, so I'll come back and see we'll everyone, yeah. Well, thank you, Manny, without uh, you. Well, thank you so much. Without you, Mum. I love you big time, mate. I love you So too. proud of you. It means a lot. You guys all take care. Love you, Mum. But Doc says, it's you guys that keep me going. You keep us going. <laughs> but you guys keep me going.